this is Jill, Ed, and Chris, and this is Ask BTA. Now, one of the big questions we're hearing is what is iOS 15? Well, you know, every fall, Apple puts out an update to the iOS operating systems for your iPad and your iPhone. And the newest one is iOS 15, and it came out September 20th. So well, a week and a half ago. And uh, a couple of things you need to know about it. Uh, and we're going to share those uh, things that are important to know, but we also want to share some of the cool uh, aspects, features, which we think everybody's going to find intriguing. So anyway, the first thing is you need to know is this needs to be installed manually. It's not going to automatically install, even if you have that feature set. And if you're not sure how to find uh, the install, you go to settings and you scroll down to general and then you'll see software update. Now I haven't updated yet. Have you guys? So no, I, um, I haven't. Ed, have you? I have not. Yeah. Um, we, we recommend uh, generally that you do not become um, an early adopter of updates. Uh, because the first uh, version uh, usually has, I shouldn't say usually, it always um, has, um, has, has glitches. Some of them are bigger than others. Um, we recommend that um, if this is, you know, 15.0, which is out, you know, as of September 20th, um, there is already what's called a beta of 15.1, which is also available um, for uh, in, in uh, for, for for special subscribers um, to Apple, um, but when 15.1, when the first update to the new operating system comes out, uh, that is when we would recommend that you actually go and do the download because the update, the point one um always has fixes um to 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 minor glitches and you know as they continue you know 15.2 etc um those will get better and smoother just that first one um really is um an experiment so that's that's what we recommend also along with that uh, some of the features that we're going to share with you today are not available. They're not quite finished or mm -hmm. quite ready for public consumption uh, with 15.0. So, for example, uh, Ed's going to talk about uh, FaceTime and some really cool up upgrades to that. Uh, however, it's not available. They're not available quite yet. So, just keep your eye on your software updates. Go to, again, settings, general, and then software update. And uh, in a week or two, you probably would be comfortable with uh, starting the installation. Now, it does depend what device you have, whether or not you can install iOS 15. So if you have an iPhone 5, or a very early iPad, you probably, well, you don't, definitely won't be able to install iOS um, 15. So you, if you have a 6S or uh, an SE that came out in 2016, you can install and then every other version of the iPhone since then, the iPhone 8, the iPhone 10, 11, 12, and of course the 13, I'm sure it comes with 15 already installed. So that's um, important to think about. There are lots and lots of cool updates, uh, including some security changes, which is always a good thing. You know, there are people out there that just love the challenge of breaking into um, devices. And so Apple and every other major tech company is always looking for ways to defeat those kinds of hackers. I want to share with you two websites. 
uh, that you might find useful and interesting. So let me share my screen. And the first one I'm going to show you comes, whoops, excuse me, it comes from MacRumors.com roundup slash iOS dash 15 slash. And this has all the updates. It's very interesting. The one thing I wanted to show you is at the bottom, scrolling down, you see how many updates there are. Look at this, just goes on and on and on. We can't possibly do those all today. Okay. What they have are links to user guides, iOS 15 guides and how to. And so you can see we've got everything from how to rearrange and delete home screen pages to um, how to use visual lookup in photos to identify landmarks, plants, and pets. So if you're looking for a how to, this is a really good source. Um, look at them all on how to actually do all these things that iOS 15 is going to allow us to do. So again, that's at macrumors.com slash roundup slash iOS hyphen 15 slash. The other one is actually from Apple. And it again goes through the different uh, updates and it has a lot of graphics that show you or demonstrate what the features look like. So you might find that also interesting and helpful. And this one, and I'll put these in the chat, are, is apple.com slash iOS slash iOS hyphen 15 slash. And of course, if you just put into your search window, iOS 15 and hit search, these will come up and so will some others. So enough with the introduction, let's uh, switch to Ed, who's going to tell you about uh, some of the new things with FaceTime. Thanks, Jill. Um, FaceTime has done what is fairly obvious, I think, in making FaceTime a much more versatile video conferencing system. Um, we've all been uh, spent large parts of our lives in the last year and a half on Zoom. And um, I think what Apple has done is to open uh, FaceTime up to other than just Apple users and um, so that it's become a more versatile video conferencing system, as I said. So as one of the articles said, you can now video chat with your green buddies. Remember that when we text or, um, or chat with, um, when you text on, on your iPhone with someone else besides um, another Apple users, it shows up as a green um, as a green screen, not as a not as a blue, um, not as a blue. So now you can chat with your Android and PC friends um, through FaceTime. So that's that's a huge huge one, and that's probably one of the biggest thing. Um, there's also a new grid view that probably will resemble the different ways that you can show um, people on Zoom. That will also be on FaceTime. And then there's something called Share Play, which is a new feature this year. And it allows FaceTime users to share experiences with each other during the FaceTime calls. You can share things like Apple Music songs. You can share TV shows or movies. Um, and that sh that's called Share Play. That's new, as I said. And as Jill mentioned, that's one of the new additions that hasn't quite made the cut yet. So it's not quite done. So it, you may have to wait a little bit on that uh, future version. Um, one other thing that I wanted to mention about FaceTime 
is that you can, FaceTime users can now share your screens to view apps together, which will be kind of a neat workaround um, when you need to, to look at the same app at the same time. You can do that through FaceTime. So those are some of the big things. As I said, the biggest thing is that it's really become more of a video conferencing system and it doesn't just have to be apple to apple. Now it can, you can include anybody in that. That's it for FaceTime. Okay, so I think that's gonna be a pretty cool, um, pretty cool feature, the sharing the apps on FaceTime. I'm thinking of um, my nephew who they bought a new house recently and would share uh, different uh, possibilities via, oh, I don't remember which real estate app it was, but you know, this time it could be talking and looking at it together. So that'd be exactly. pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So Chris, do you want to tell us about Focus? Yes, yes. So um, I think Focus is going to be really good for me <laughs> since <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm easily distracted. But essentially what Focus is going to do is it's going to reduce distractions when you are trying to work on something. And um, it will allow you, you know, through its settings, it's going to allow you to um, set what types of notifications will actually get through to you as you're working. And um, it will block incoming notifications that you set. So it means if there's, you know, if you're expecting something, you can set it so that will get through. But other things, you know, like your ad from Amazon, you know, that it'll, it just won't come through, which, which will be great. Um, and if someone's trying to reach you on messages, um, you can set an away message. So that, so, you know, if uh, Jill and Ed are trying to get through to me and I'm working on some kind of a deadline or something like that, it will actually say, I'm sorry, you know, I can't, re I can't be reached right now. Please, you know, um, leave a message. I'll pick it up when I can. So it's kind of like a, uh, like a, um, not a voicemail box, but a message box that, um, that can be left. And there's also a setting where if it is urgent, there's a way for whoever's trying to reach you to indicate that it is urgent and it will get through to you which is kind of, kind of cool. Um, and it will, um, the iOS platform, it will actually suggest, um, you know, whether or not you might be wanting to focus at that time. So the device can actually determine or, or look at, you know, if you are trying to write something, you're trying to do some research, it'll pick, pick up on that and it will actually ask you do you want to focus on this and not be disturbed? So that's kind of cool. It is. It sounds like do not disturb while driving on steroids for a lot yeah. of different aspects. Yeah, Jill, do you think that Chris is going to use that to shut us out when he really doesn't want to be uh, bothered by some of our crazy ramblings? if i put money on that or not <laughs> no i'll always be available what it might do is it might it might take some heat off of joan <laughs> <laughs> that's true good idea yes we like to to kid chris, chris about uh his many different projects anyway so ed i already went out of order um so do you want to do messages next sure that's fine yep a couple interesting things about about this too, um, kind of like FaceTime messages in iOS 15 will enable some cross app sharing. And what that means is if I share a photo with Jill or Chris, then that allows them to actually open it up in photos instead of dealing with it initially in in a message. And, and later on, that's a, even gonna be more helpful, more useful, because they can find images shared through messages using a contact name. 
through my name. I know that people are always asking, are always asking us, how can I find, and I know I got a message from my nephew last week with two great pictures, how do I find them? And yeah. now that, that will be, a, you'll be able to do that in messages. Um, there's something called a, um, a shared with you section and content sent to you in messages automatically uh, appears in that new yeah. section in the app called shared with you, whether it's photos or music or whatever. So you'll instantly be able to, to follow that. One other thing that I'm really looking, Jill, if you could show the, um, let's show the uh, new Memoji, just go down one, there we go. Go up just a little bit more, yeah. The one on the left, now we're gonna, and Chris likes to use his Memojis with us a lot and we, we really appreciate that. But now it's gonna be more than just a headshot um, because you can represent your look and style with multicolor headwear and some clothes. So that's gonna be good. That'll, that'll be interesting to see because Chris is a very sharp dresser. He's always got the, the newest gear on. So that will allow him to do that. Very cool. Yeah, that's messages. Uh, that's messages. So. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to share with you uh, some of the new privacy features, which uh, I think are important. You know, we all are finding that social media in the internet, sometimes it seems pretty invasive, even though it's very hard to give it up. So there are some new features. One is male privacy protection. And this has to do, let me see if I can scroll down there and find that. Uh, Safari wallet. Mm, look at all these photos. Privacy. Okay. Um, so male privacy protection. What it does is that people who are sending you emails cannot see your IP address, nor can they tell if um, you have opened and read the email. So it gives you some protection. Now, if you're not sure what your IP address is, it has to do with your Wi-Fi and you can find that in settings, go to Wi-Fi, open Wi-Fi, and uh, you'll see the name of your network and there's a little eye in a circle. And if you tap on that, you'll find information about your um, IP address. So that's a new uh, privacy feature. Second of all, you can get this privacy report. And what that does, it tells you how often apps have access things like your location services, your uh, photos, your microphone. And uh, it also, you can see here, uh, tells you, how many trackers have been prevented from profiling you because once again they can't get to that IP address. Um, it tells you which websites uh, have uh, contacted trackers, um, the most contacted trackers. So you can go in and you can see who is, who is uh, tracking you and it gives you some choices about what you can do about that. Uh, the other privacy or another privacy aspect has to do with Siri. Uh, Siri, you know, we say, hey, Siri. I shouldn't say that too loud because they're all going to answer me. <laughs> and uh, you may ask Siri a question. And usually it goes through the Internet. But now it can be processed just on your phone and not go through the Internet. So that gives you some additional privacy. And thirdly is Safari. They have got to have something called intelligent tracking prevention. And again, the trackers can't profile you using your IP address. And this is really interesting. It will automatically upgrade the non-secure HTTP addresses to the HTTP 
HTTPS. You know, when you're using mm. your credit card, et cetera, you always want to make sure you've got that S there. You know that it's a secure site. And so now Safari will automatically upgrade those non-secure to straight HTTP uh, addresses to one that is secure. So that's uh, pretty interesting. And again, there are other um, security updates that they're always working on. You may have read of the Pegasus virus and uh, we all got a notice to update to, I don't know, 14.8 or something like that. And uh, they're continuing to battle the hackers. And so that's one of the reasons why you might want to keep an eye on your updates just to make sure that uh, everything is uh, hunky dory with your devices. Now, Ed did find um, a little bit comment that said that if you don't want to go up to iOS 15, you can uh, stay with 14. And Apple will continue to send you the security patches. Now that will not be things that I talked about like the, the um, mail privacy protection or the, the Siri being able to process just on the phone. It would be the internal security things. So again, something you need to think about and take charge of your phone. So we're gonna end with Ed talking about the upgrades to maps you know Let me scroll back up here while you get there jill apple has kind of taken it on the chin over the last few years and not been given um, a whole lot of credit we've always a lot of people have have used google maps saying they were far superior and for a while they were but map uh, but apple's really up their game and especially with some of the changes in iOS 15. And I'll just speak to the uh, changes right here. There are four different ones. This first one sounds really cool. This is this it's called an all new city experience that allows you um, great detail for roads, neighborhoods, buildings, and much more. And you can see um, uh, 3D landmarks like the Golden Gate Bridge um, in both the day and they also have what's called the moonlight or moonlit um, night mode which will will help when you're out at out at night to actually recognize things um, how it really looks on the left hand side um, yeah go down just a little bit Jill if you would on the left hand side is the new driving features again we really recommend that you've got somebody in your car especially in a city <laughs> that are using these features, but again, much more detail um, for the driving features. Uh, things like turn lanes, crosswalks, and bike lanes, all of which will actually actually show up. And then the, the two last things that are, one, the first one's going to be kind of weird, actually. Immersive walking instructions. Um, you hold the, your phone up and actually you can actually see exactly where to go. It shows crosswalks and, um, and how to get there. Um, it's, good. it's a good thing to glance up every once in a while from your <laughs> phone. But, but that's gonna be again very helpful in cities. I don't think I'm gonna need that in small Orono, Maine to, to move around. And then the last feature I'll mention is the new transit features. Um, it shows you in greater detail where subways are, and it, now it's even going to, um, as you're approaching your stop, it's going to tell you when to get off. So uh, some pretty interesting. If you've been a, a Google Map uh, user, um, that's been great, but, but give Apple Maps a try. They're, they're, as I said, they're really upping, upping their game. Okay. Thank you. So those are just a few of the features that we're going to find when we all download iOS 15. Uh, it's going to be different, definitely, than iOS 14, but these features look pretty interesting to me. So thank you for joining us. And uh, perhaps later on in the year, we'll do another iOS 15 update as we play around with these different features and have our own personal take on them. <laughs>